What's up guys? I'm Ashley Jenkins and Blizzard has announced that a number of World of Warcraft users have been infected with a Windows specific Trojan that's designed to steal your account information even if you're using Blizzard's Authenticator. The Trojan was distributed via a fake but working curse client downloaded from a fake curse website that a number of users accidentally found via search engines. If you want to find out whether you've been infected, create an MS info file and look in the startup program section of that file for Disker or Disker64. If either of those appear, delete the fake curse client and run an updated malware byte scan. Then check the MS info file again to make sure the Trojan is gone. Once you've cleared it, immediately change your password and double check your personal information to make sure that none of it's been changed. Continuing Blizzard's rough day, they've also decided to delay the next phase of their Hearthstone beta test season 2 due to some sprite issues that were discovered during yesterday's beta maintenance. Instead, the current test season will be extended until they feel they can smoothly make the transition. When the servers come back up for maintenance today, player ranks will not have changed and test season 1 will continue until further notice, explains Blizzard community manager Christina Sims. They've already run into a few extra bumps with testing and last month announced that their open beta would be delayed into the new year, though they've also assured gamers that anyone who signs up by January 7th will gain access to the closed beta prior to its move into open beta. Next up, sharp-eyed gamers may have noticed that Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout Tactics were removed from online stores like Steam at the end of 2013, but Bethesda has announced that they intend to reinstate them as soon as possible. When Bethesda obtained the Fallout IP in 2007, previous owner Interplay retained merchandising rights that allowed it to sell the previous games in the series and also retained the rights to create a Fallout-branded MMO. In 2012, Bethesda filed suit against Interplay seeking cancellation of the license on the grounds that Interplay had failed to meet the conditions for the license, rendering it invalid. In the end, Bethesda became the full owner of all Fallout IP and Interplay's license to sell the previous Fallout titles expired at the end of 2013, which is why it was removed from stores. Now that Bethesda controls all Fallout IP, they are working on restoring the game's two digital storefronts, but before they can do that, they need to make some slight changes to the games around publisher info, legal text, and so on. Those who already own the Interplay versions of the games won't be affected by the change. While we're talking digital storefronts, the US 3DS eShop has been updated with a new demo for upcoming RPG Bravely Default, which allows you to play through a side quest unique to the demo that won't feature in the final game. Those who play the demo will find their character progression will carry over to the retail release, which is due out in the US on February 7th. The game is already available in Japan, Europe, and Australia. Thanks to its presence in other Western markets, it's also been confirmed that some of the skimpier costumes have been modified to show a bit less skin. In one costume, a bikini bottom and bra-like top are replaced with short shorts and a larger bandeau top. And in another costume, where the original character is covered almost exclusively in straps, the Western version adds a black bodysuit underneath. Some of the characters have been aged from 15 to 18, and a few innuendos have been toned down in translation as well. Killer Instinct, Xbox One's free-to-play fighting game, has also seen a character change in a new update, but instead of making costume changes, they've switched out the free character, Jago, and replaced him with Saberwolf. Microsoft has previously announced that they intend to rotate the free fighter between the available characters, and this is the first switch since the game released on November 22nd. When you download the game, you get access to one character for free, and you can wait until they rotate to try new ones or purchase additional characters for $4.99. The full set of characters is available for $19.99. The new update also provides save data fixes, toasts options, a new character select option in the local versus pause screen, updated command list, and updated accessory menu screens, as well as other tweaks and fixes. Finally, Respawn has confirmed that the PC version of Titanfall will not have mod tools at launch and they'll evaluate after launch whether to implement them at all. When asked about the tools, Respawn founder Vince Zampella replied, Not at launch for sure. We'll have to evaluate after launch. Earlier this week, Respawn also confirmed that sniping will be a part of the game, but those expecting to use quick scoping and no scoping will be disappointed. Sniping is in the game, but due to how the game plays, it's a pretty different animal than you'll find in your run-of-the-mill modern military shooter. Quick scoping and no scoping are ineffective, shares a Respawn dev who goes by the moniker Scripticus. And that's the news today, or at least it's all we can fit in. Do you think it makes sense to alter character designs and costumes from their original versions for Western release? Or would you prefer to play it as it was originally designed? Let us know in the comments below. Then check out roosterteeth.com where we've posted a new episode of our gaming podcast, The Patch, to kick off the new year.